everyone, and welcome to Audubon at Home. My name is Lisa, and today our topic is the night sky. Now, you might be asking, why are we talking about the night, the night sky when it's in the middle of the daytime? We figured it would be easier to tell you a little bit about what to look for at night when you can actually see me. If we tried to do this video during the nighttime, you wouldn't be able to see me, and you probably wouldn't be able to see the stars either. So let's talk a little bit about what we might see in the night sky. I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about one of the constellations, the groups of stars, and then we'll tell you a little bit about how you can find resources so that you can figure out what to look for in the night sky. So the first thing, I want you to think about where you might go to look at the night sky. A good place is a place that doesn't have too, too many trees that has kind of a field behind you. You can see there's a little bit of a field behind me here. And sometimes you may not be able to get away from where the trees and the buildings are, and that's okay too. I've also looked at the night sky right from my apartment in Providence, right outside. And when you look straight up, you can usually see the sky. So try to find a place that has a good view, but if you can't, don't worry. Okay, so now you've got a good spot. Another thing is you may wanna have some equipment. I happen to have some binoculars with me. If you happen to have binoculars and you wanna use those, that can help you see some of the cool night objects a little bit closer and you can see their detail. So do that too if you'd like to. So what are some of the things that we're gonna see at nighttime when you look up in the sky? Well, the first thing that probably all of you have seen, even if you're out there looking or not, is the moon. So definitely take a look and see if you can find the moon. Now, the moon is so fun to watch because it changes throughout the month. It has different shapes. Those shapes are called phases. And those phases just tell you where the moon is as it's going around the earth. So you've probably seen the full moon before, and you've probably seen a quarter moon, which looks like a half, and you've probably seen that pretty crescent. Here's a picture of some of the phases of the moon, and you can take a look at those. You'll probably recognize them. And see which phase the moon is when you look out at the night sky. Now, when you're looking at those phases, one of the cool things you'll also see, if the moon is not full, there's part of the moon that's covered in darkness but it looks a little bit gray, and that part is really neat because it's called earth shine. It's actually twice reflected sunlight. So the sunlight comes to the earth, and because we've got clouds and things like that, some of it reflects back into space. And since the moon is so close to us, it will reflect back onto the moon, and then the grayish part of the moon that's not showing the sunlight is where you see the earth shine. See if you can see that when you look out. If you've got something like binoculars, see if you can see the features of the moon. Even if you're just looking with your eyes, you might notice that some parts are lighter and some parts are darker. The moon has mountains and valleys, and those reflect the light differently. Some people say that those different light and dark places look like a shape or a face. Some people say it's the face of a man. Some people say it's a coyote. Other people say it looks like cheese. What do you think it looks like? Okay, so the moon is a great thing to look for, but occasionally there's no moon. It's called the new moon. That's where we are today, in fact. I'm doing this in February, the beginning of February. And the new moon is pretty dark, which is actually not a bad day to go out and see the other things that are in the sky. What about planets? You probably know the planets that are closest to the Earth. The brightest planet is Venus, our sister planet. Venus is so beautiful and it shines so brightly. It was named after the goddess of beauty. That's the name Venus. And that's usually the brightest thing in the night sky after the moon. Now again, we're taking, we're taking this video in February when Venus is not out at nighttime, it's out during the morning. It actually rises with the sun, so it is very hard to see right now. But you might be looking at this a little bit later in the year, and you can usually see Venus throughout the spring, throughout the summer. It is a beautiful, bright star. 
Well, it's actually a planet, right? It's not a star. And the reason you can tell is because it's not twinkling quite as much as the stars twinkle. Now, Venus is hard to see right now. So our other neighbor is called Mars. You've probably heard of that one before too. And the reason Mars is a nice one to look for is because of its color. Mars is named after the god of war because it's a red color. So when you're looking out in the night sky, and right now in the middle of the winter, Mars is a good thing to look for. You can see that reddish color. Sometimes it's brighter and sometimes it's darker depending on where we are in relation to it. Right now, Mars has passed us, but you can still see that nice red color in Mars. The other planets are harder to see. So if you ever get a chance to go to an observatory like the Ladd Observatory in Providence and get a chance to look through their telescopes, it is so beautiful to see our planets like Jupiter and like Saturn because they've got lines and they've got rings and all sorts of really neat features. So please get a chance to do that if, you, if you're if you able. Let's move on from planets. So really the thing that intrigues most of us that makes me so interested in going out and looking at the night sky is all those beautiful stars. Those stars appear in different groups and they look like little patterns across the sky or shapes. So for as long as people have lived on this earth, they've looked up at the night sky and they've made up stories about what these little patterns and shapes are. You've probably heard of them called constellations or maybe even the word asterisms. So a constellation that you're probably familiar with is Ursa Minor or Ursa Major. Those are the big and little bears. But really what we usually see when we look at those ones is the brightest stars, the Big Dipper. Here is a nice picture of what the Big Dipper might look like. I bet that you recognize that. What does it look like to you? I don't really see a bear when I look at the Big Dipper. And the Little Dipper is so, so light that you can't always see it. Usually you only see one of the stars in the Little Dipper. But still, it's fun to imagine that there's a bear running up there across the sky. So when I look at the Big Dipper and even the little faint stars of the Little Dipper, I sort of see a spoon or like a ladle that you might use to take the soup out of a pot. There's no right or wrong answer. So I'm in this new spot here at Audubon and this is the spot where I usually stand when I'm looking out to look at the night sky. It looks due west and so I can tell what's gonna be in that section when I look up my star chart for at night. And it has a nice view without too many trees. So we thought we'd change, change pace a little bit and be in this little new spot for our next bit about constellations. So this story that I'm gonna tell about the constellations is told by the ancient Greeks. And when they looked up at the sky, they saw some of the, their characters from their stories reflected in the sky. The patterns that they saw made them think of their heroes. And that's where this story came from. So a constellation that a lot of you probably have seen before is called the constellation Cassiopeia. Now when I see Cassiopeia in the sky, I think it looks a little bit like an M or sometimes like a W, depending on the time of year because it, it turns around as we're twirling underneath it. That's one of those constellations that you can see all year round, just like you can see the Big Dipper and the brightest star in the Little Dipper all year round. So let me tell you the story of Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia was in, according to Greek legend, the queen of Ethiopia. And one day she was sitting there and she was combing her hair and she was sort of thinking about how she loved the way she looked with her hair and she liked the way her daughter looks. Her daughter's name is Andromeda. And she started bragging that she thought herself and Andromeda were the most beautiful women on the earth. Now, she kept bragging about this and it started to make the sea nymphs, the Nereids, kind of mad because they thought that they were the most beautiful creatures on the earth. So they went to the god of the sea, Poseidon, and they complained to him about Cassiopeia. She's got to stop complaining. She's got to stop 
thinking that she's the most beautiful one on the earth, right? And so he agreed to put a stop to this and he sent this great sea monster whose name was Cetus, this great sea monster to come and destroy the villages along the coast in the kingdom where, where Cassiopeia was queen. Now her husband, the king, Cepheus, heard about this great monster that was coming to attack their villages and was really nervous about this, didn't want all those people to get destroyed and all those villages to get destroyed. So he went to a place called an oracle. And an oracle is kind of like a place where there's a, a wise person who gives advice and who sometimes has sort of a direct line, the cell phone number, as it were, to the gods, right? And the oracle told Cepheus he could prevent those villages from being destroyed by offering his daughter Andromeda as a sacrifice. Now, note to everybody listening at home, this is not good parenting. Because Cassiopeia and Cepheus took their daughter and they tied her up on the rocks next to the sea. Don't try that at home, that's not very nice, right? But it did, it did seem to be something that might work. So as Cetus was coming along and, and saw Andromeda, poor Andromeda there on the rocks, don't worry, the story ends very well. There was a savior who came along. His name was Perseus. Perseus happened to be flying along on his winged horse Pegasus, who you may have heard of before. And he saw that Andromeda was in distress and he rescued her and he defeated the monster. And the end of the story is that Andromeda and Perseus got married and hopefully lived happily ever after. Now, the Greeks, tell this story and they see all of these pictures up in the sky. They see Cassiopeia, the W or the M that you might see. And they see Cepheus, who kind of looks a little bit like a house. And they see Cetus, the whale. And they see Perseus. And they do have Andromeda up there too. It's a little hard to see Andromeda. The stars are not very bright, but there is a galaxy that you can find called the Andromeda Galaxy. It's one of the closer ones to us that's right in that constellation. And those are all in the same part of the sky. So it's nice to be able to know the stories of all those. Now, the end of the story after Perseus and Andromeda get married is that Poseidon felt bad about all of this unrest and all this worry that he caused. And so all of the people in the story, Perseus and Andromeda and um, Cassiopeia and Cepheus and even Cetus the whale got put up in the sky by Poseidon and that's why the Greeks think that these these are all together in the same part of the sky so that you can tell that story. Now the Greeks are just one group of people that told stories about the stars. There are many many different cultures and many people throughout the world who see the patterns in the stars and have different stories. You should look closely and see what these remind you of. Because maybe you don't see Perseus and a whale and Pegasus the flying horse when you see these patterns. Maybe you see something else. If you are interested in more of these stories in the stars, there are many, many places that you can research this. There are books in the library. There are websites that tell stories. So please continue to look for more stories in the stars. I want to end with one more thing that I think is fun to look for when you're looking at the sky. There are not just planets, and there's not just the moon, and there's not just stars. Sometimes you get a chance to see satellites in the sky. And one of the satellites that's moving across the sky on a regular basis as the Earth is turning underneath it is the International Space Station. You can go to this website and you can find out if where you are, there will be a pass of the International Space Station. It'll tell you where to look. It might say, look near the Big Dipper, or it might say, look close to the moon. And you can actually see something moving across the sky. It is very cool. I hope you get a chance to see that. Well, I want to tell you to keep enjoying going out at night, looking at the stars, enjoy learning about the stories and the constellations, if you get a chance to go to a planetarium someday, you can learn more stories and you can look at more patterns in the stars. Here in Rhode Island, there's a planetarium at Roger Williams Natural History Museum in Providence. 
and they do shows on Saturday and Sunday in the afternoon. And there is an observatory, the Ladd Observatory in Providence as well. There are also observatories down in Charlestown, Rhode Island, and in Situate, Rhode Island. The Charlestown one is called Frosty Drew, and the Situate one is called Sea Graves. So we hope you get a chance to visit one of those. Check out these other places and these other resources that will help you continue to learn about the night sky. Enjoy and thank you for joining us for Audubon at Home.